Bunnies and welcome back or to Will and Bunny cozy space to talk about books. I'm very excited to embark on this adventure of reading weird lit fic. So I did a kind of first installment in this idea I guess of just picking out weird books to read and I think it's quite a big subgenre I suppose. There's a lot of books that are categorised under this weird lit fic and to me weird lit fic is almost something that's grounded in reality but it has something abnormal in it that wouldn't come across in your everyday so it always has something that's a bit different or something that's a bit wacky or suspenseful or magical realism or spec speculative fiction woven in there as well and I just love it because I love how it's usually just reality but then with this other element of not normal in there um so I'm gonna pick out a few books and take you along with me and choose my TBR because I have a few left on my shelf as to what I wanted to read but I had such a fun time last time so I thought it was a good idea to do it again so let's go and pick out the TBR I don't actually often tend to find out much about my books before diving into them or before buying them. I tend to look for a key few words that kind of summarise the book, almost how I do my wrap ups and see whether that's something that I enjoy or not. So I'm gonna kind of be guessing as to if these books are weird lit fic um, and some of them may not be so they may end up not being working out on this TBR but this is my kind of shelf full of lit fic and full of romance and this is all my paperbacks. So I kind of have a few so Collection down here as to weird lit fic. I have these two in which include Brutes and then also Big Swiss. I've heard Big Swiss is weird lit fic. I think this is by the same author that wrote Vacuum in the Dark. Ah, yes, it is by the same author that wrote Vacuum in the Dark. So I'm excited to read this one because I read this one and it was enjoyable and this one sounds just as fun. So I think I'm going to add this one to my list. And then we have Brutes, and I'm not 100% sure, oh yeah, here we go, A Fever Dream of a Novel, which will transport you into the lip gloss, select swamps of girlhood. So another key word for me when it comes to weird lit fic is fever dream-esque and fever dream inducing, and that's what I love my weird lit fic to be, is what something that feels like a fever dream whilst you're reading it or once you've read it, and so this one is also going to go on the TBR. Now we've picked out these two to add on the TBR, we're going to go over to my small hardback shelves, in which also houses some of my weird lit fic books. Um, that shelf mainly has romance and literary fiction on and so I'm just going to look through my small hardback shelf over here and see what ones we have. So I know that we have Private Rights by Julia Armfield and this is a very anticipated book for me. I was very excited to buy it and I think this is weird lit fic. I'm not 100% sure. I know that her previous novel Our Wives Under the Sea was weird lit fic so I'm going to hold on to this one and assume yes. And then the other one I have on here is Piglet in which again I think is weird lit fic. Um, so I'm going to just read the insides of these and then and see whether they are or not and see whether I add them to my TBR. So I think this one is weird lit fic based on that obscure and intriguing little description. It's left very open and kind of it can go any way and I find a lot of like this subgenre includes descriptions that can almost not be in that magical realism-esque state and could just be a normal novel um, but I feel as if that this one is something telling me my gut that this is part of that subgenre so I'm going to add it to the TBR and then I think I'm going to add private rights as well because it seems like it is I want to say that it is um I really don't know I really don't know. I don't think I actually have anything else on my shelf that is weird lip fic. Oh, I also have Cursed Bread by Sophie McIntosh and I know that this one is kind of estranged lip fic as well. So I think I'm going to add these to my TBR. So we've got Cursed Bread and then Piglet. We've also got Big Swiss and Brutes. Um, and so I think I'll leave private rights off there for now just until I confirm that it is. Perhaps I'll look at some reviews and see whether anyone has the kind of themes of fever dream or weird or kind of obscure in their reviews. I try not to spoil myself. Yes, this is the TBR for this video. I'm so excited for each and every one of these novels. Cannot wait to get to them. I'm not quite sure what I'm going to start with. I think I might start with Curse Brad because it's the shortest and kind of get me back into the subgenre. Um, and I'll update you once I have some more updates on these reads so grab yourself your most warming hot drink a cozy blanket and let's get to reading weird fever dream-esque books
113 pages through Curse Bread. I'm really enjoying it so far. I'm finding it a really interesting concept and loving this kind of dual timeline aspect going on here. We have these kind of future and um, previous reaccountants of what has obviously happened in this book and I'm adoring how this book is structured and written and how there's this element and underlying current of mystery woven in and how the author is dealing with that with using these dual timelines to their full effect. I'm loving the admiration that this character has for another particular character and the obsession and just want and need and desire to be befriend this character and be with this character and almost it feels like they have this intense obsession that they just cannot get rid of in their head and they're trying to become this person and I'm just loving exactly how unhinged it is and how it has this element of that magical realism aspect or this element of that ominous tone that you don't know what's to come and I think that's what I adore most about these books is it tends to have some ominous tones around it and themes around it that you're kind of left guessing what's going to happen here and there's key bits of information missed out and it's often an unreliable narrator like we're facing here and I just love how we're in the mundanity of life and this could just be such a boring and simplistic book but because we have these ominous tones and this mystery running through it and this pure obsession of characters and intense emotions running through this book it just becomes so much more um i'm just whizzing through it absolutely whizzing through it don't have long left to go i would say i'm just over halfway through so very intrigued to see how this all wraps up the water cure and I am rating it in my good tier. I thought this was really interesting. I loved the sort of exploration of obsession and something being new and fresh in this town in which it's just filled rife with mundanity and monotonous, being monotonous and these characters felt so two-dimensional until our new couple was introduced and just the obsession and the admiration and the addiction that the town had for these two characters and the exploration of that and how they can bend things to their will and yeah I just found it so interesting you knew where this was going to go just from the title alone and at the back there was the author's note about it being almost based on true events and so if you're aware of that then you kind of again knew the concept that it was going to turn into but I just thought this was so and such an interesting read despite you knowing where it was going to lead to just experience these characters pure feral obsession with these new characters and what it means to have something new when you've been living such a monotonous life and a life that you're not happy with and suddenly someone comes in and has something that you want and what you're willing to do to get it and almost how oblivious you become to your everyday life and there were so many things in here which as a reader you could see and you could understand but from these characters living their lives every day they were just so in it that they just didn't have the space to look in their peripherals and realize what was actually going on and so yeah i thought it was a very fun read a very quick and short read um very interesting fever dream x for certain and again has that ambiguous ending that you just don't really know what happened and it just all felt like a fever dream so highly recommend this one if you're into this kind of strong genre and those themes sound interesting to you I would say it definitely has themes of the obsession admiration and addiction to someone and also a small town a predictable plot line that fever dream-esque style writing and womanhood and girlhood and yeah just comparison and love 
and wanting and belonging. So those are my themes that I'm going to suggest for this one and I do recommend it, I definitely do recommend it. So I'm going to pick up one of the next books on the TBR now. <laughs> I'm enjoying Brute so far, but a little confused by the narrative style. I know that there's a collective of girls, but they refer to themselves as we constantly in all of their narratives. And even when they're doing individual things, it's a constant collective noun, in which is quite jarring to read, but also really intriguing and interesting as to are they actually interconnected in some other way than just being friends or thinking that they are some sort of collective. I'm really intrigued to see how this plays out but it's quite an ominous book so far. I finished Brutes and I'm rating it in my mediocre tier. I have a lot of mixed feelings about this book and found it as though I did the whole way through it. I thought it was quite good in the way its writing style was made into having collective nouns and it also had quite a naive narrative but I think the things that left me disliking this book and not really gelling with it was the ambiguous ending which is quite common in this sort of weird lit fix fear but this felt a bit too hazy and a bit too beautiful words but not much development and plot nor characters there was a multi-linear timeline so we're going forward and back and that didn't really add too too much to the story it just kind of made these characters feel more hazy and more non-fleshed out um it was just it left me feeling a bit ugh and same with the ending it had an ominous tone underneath it and a thriller element running through it and both of those the way that they were wrapped up felt again a bit dull and a bit oh is that it um so yeah i didn't really gel with this book very well i didn't really enjoy it too too much but i thought the writing was beautifully done beautifully crafted and the narrative was beautifully done as well um i loved how it was telling a story but there wasn't much to tell um so i do recommend it if those themes sound interesting to you um, I also wrote down that there was dark undertones in which there very much was and a lot of things were hinted to but not necessarily executed upon so again that was an interesting element of this book but yes definitely one of my least favourite books from the genre sadly but still highly recommend it if any of these seem sound interesting to you because it might be a perfect book for you. So I'm going to move on to one of the next books, the final two books of the TBR, either Piglet or Big Swiss so let's see which book I choose next.
reading check-in for Big Swiss. I'm some two pages through and loving how we just never know where this is going to go. We never know where the character is going to take the story. The characters are so intriguing in themselves. They're being developed along with the story and the plot. The writing is so beautifully crafted. It just feels so witty, so quick, so fast and just yet yeah, this tone of ominous and intrigue and wanting to know what's going to happen, who these people are, what their story is, what the point of all of this is and loving it so far. I think it's just so beautifully crafted, beautifully done and very intrigued to see how all of this wraps up, how all of this progresses and whether it continues on this kind of unhinged streak of just random things being said. You know when you kind of have an intrusive thought come into your mind of just something really bizarre? This is exactly what this book feels like. So very excited to continue reading. reading Big Swiss and I am reading this with my goods here. This kept me entertained throughout the whole entire story. I was very enraptured with the characters. This had themes of trauma. Um, the characters felt so fleshed out real and so many bizarre and specific things were happening to them in a way in which you couldn't help but feel as though it was real but it was just completely fictional um yeah like i say trauma was in here therapy was in here a lot of trigger warnings need to be delved into before reading this book because there was a lot packed into this one sexual exploration was woven in here as well um we had a character who was kind of going through their life there was multi formats and multi timelines and i thought the way that this book was crafted was beautiful and just the kind of little nods to different elements of the book and different characters and the way that they wove into each other um i just thought it was so good and it was a really really delight to read and thought it was fun i couldn't help but feel that some moments of it it did just feel as though there wasn't much plot there wasn't much progressing us forward or anything being resolved and i feel that's very much the nature of these books but i can't help but not rate it in my great tier because of that um and yeah i thought that that's the only criticism i have of it i suppose in which it's kind of not inherently its fault um as a novel but i feel as though the writing could not really be faulted from how encapsulated it kept me in this whole entire novel and how fleshed out the characters were and how real they felt and these scenes and situations they were in everything down to the house descriptions to a trauma situation and using trauma as an exchange for currency was um, a big point in here too um yeah i just thought it was so interesting just the way that this author took the characters and it feels so complicated to even think about how you would start to write a book like this and i really really appreciated it so yes quite a recommendation for from me for this one and I'm going to now progress on to the final book in this TBR in which is Piglet so let's get to it. <laughs> pages through Piglet and sadly I'm going to be putting it down for now. I'm just not gelling with the writing, the characters aren't very involved or fleshed out and I'm finding the only intriguing aspect about this is the food descriptions and only when I'm hungry I just find other than that I'm just not really wanting to pick this book up or gravitating towards it and I don't want to force myself into a reading slump or force myself to read a book that I'm not enjoying for the time being. So I hope this doesn't reflect too badly on the book but I just don't think it's the right book for me at this time um like i say 67 pages through so not very far through at all but i'm definitely going to revisit this one because i think it could be something that i'm really interested in just for the time being sadly it's a no so that does actually bring us to the end of this video and adventure thank you ever so much for joining me i hope that you picked up a couple recommendations along the way and i hope that wherever you are whatever you're doing you have a wonderful day or night and until next time friends bye <laughs>